welcome to episode three of the Live Unbroken podcast. So hello to the Unbroken and the Perpetual Nation. Thank you for joining us again. And I have a super rad guest with me this week, or this month actually, we're kind of doing the monthly, um, Erin Blevins, aka Shut Up Eat. Is that right? Got that right? Yep. Yeah, spot on. So uh, also just a bit of a caveat, we are in a train arch. So we uh, are a CrossFit box in South London called Cross the Perpetua for those that don't know, and we are under a train off, so if you can hear the train above, like so, um, we'll get some background noise and stuff like that, so apologies if, if that, that came through. But yeah, hey Aaron, how are you? Good, how are you? I am awesome. I am awesome, as always. Um, so Erin, we we spoke to your husband last time, um, yeah. and I thought it'd be really, and we talked to, to him about coaching and some kind of do stuff as well, like Game of Thrones. I haven't, I haven't heard the whole episode, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> We went to French Throwdown. I didn't and actually. I know, I didn't watch the whole thing. I feel bad. Now I'm going to have to go home and watch it. No, it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's stuff that you're privy to pretty much every day from what we talk about the fuel, fuel bar and just out and about. So, so you've probably heard it a few times. Um, so I wanted to get, you, to get um, you on to talk about, so for those that don't know, you're, uh, you've got a food blog, um, you do nutrition, you do nutrition for some cool people as well. And um, I think certainly for our members, it'd be really cool to hear your point of view on nutrition and food and stuff and training and, and all that relationship okay. uh, together because one, you're very knowledgeable on the subject and two, I think you've got a really cool outlook on it. Like when we, when we talked, I've been like, so how, what do you do around food? And I've got my own ideas, but you've given me some kind of ideas about how to maybe see food in a positive way sometimes in terms of what you want to eat rather than being like, damn it, I've got to eat che- chicken and broccoli again. Right, right. Um, I, I do, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with that and go right into it? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, I feel like I have had a very unhealthy relationship with food. Um, in the past, probably a lot of females have, um, you know, oh, I want to be thin, I want to be teeny, I want to be a size zero. Um, and I don't know how it is over here. I feel like the women over here are teeny anyway, but in the U.S., you know, it's a big deal to be small. Um, and CrossFit's kind of change the game a little bit because now women are a little bit more um you know coming into their own bodies like I want to be muscular I want to be hippie I want to have a big bum and you know that's great um but I come from endurance sports where being tiny means being fast and you know putting on tons of miles per week you know it it, there's a conflict in being small eating enough food to fuel your runs and running fast, so performance, mm. um, and so you kind of get a little bit crazy about food, and all right, I'm only going to eat this many calories. Um, at one point, I was running 100 miles a week, uh, training for a half marathon. I was wow. eating about 1,200 calories a day, Wow. which is not enough calories. No, <laughs> and that's, that's an interesting thing, because it's, it, I, I think, for me, when I talk to my members about like nutrition, I say, right, we need to figure out what your calorie intake needs to be. Right. Um, and like, what's your thought around calorie intake? Like, how do you how do you approach that kind of subject with people? Um, Michael and I kind of have similar outlook on this. Just track for a couple of days, find a good, you know, calorie tracker, and start from there. There's a ton of apps um, that will tell you exactly how many calories are in each thing to at least give you a good idea. Um, don't change anything, track for about, you know, a week, yeah. or three days at least, and just see what you're eating, like on a normal day. Yeah, what, how many calories are you putting into your right. body? Yeah. On a rest day, training day, like just to see, and then from there, okay, well, are you gaining weight with eating this many calories? Are you staying about the same, or are you dropping weight? And then from there, we can figure out, you know, what are your goals? Where can we go from here? We can manipulate a little bit better to fit whatever you want to do. Yeah, for um, sure. Well, we'll, we'll carry on with that in just a second. Okay. I want to talk a bit more about you, actually, just to kind okay. of set this up, because you talked a bit about like your past in endurance sports mm-hmm. and being an endurance athlete, and now you, what, what would you class yourself as now in terms of, I mean, not that we want to put ourselves <laughs> into boxes, but like, what would you say your predominant training method is now? Um, I'm liking CrossFit. I mean, yeah. doing CrossFit competitions, training here with the team, the Perpetual team, it's super fun um i'm not doing any only meets or gosh i can't even imagine running 
a race right now. No. So CrossFit. CrossFit. CrossFit is yeah. your predominant thing. Okay, cool. So, right now. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, you know, Aaron's been living and breathing this kind of stuff in terms of the nutrition and what you support yourself with, and then right. what you do with other people. And in terms of your your, um, your background, you did mainly endurance stuff. Any other kind of stuff within the training background for you? Um, tried my hand at cycling. Yeah. <laughs> which wasn't my favorite. Yeah, Michael's quite a big cycler. Or he was. He was pretty into cycling. Yeah, we got to the point where um, cycling was super fun. It was something that we were doing together, and then you know he needed to pick up the pace a little bit and you know prep for his racing. And I'm like, I just can't go this fast. Mm. I couldn't go as fast as he needed to go for his training. Yeah. And that's kind of when I decided that I wanted to race some running races and become competitive so we kind of kept bike riding together as like our fun time and yeah cool practicing sport together so i don't bike as much um i went to spain uh two weeks ago and and biked for the first time in a long time in it i, I heard Crushed. i heard the story yeah it was tough <laughs> it was, yeah oh my gosh there were some tears <laughs> yeah but it was fun um so just basically endurance sports okay CrossFit. Uh, throw in Olympic lifting every once in a while. Yeah, a lot of muscular endurance stuff, but right. a lot, lot of calories needed effectively. Right, exactly. So would you, what would you say the difference between programming for an endurance sport, like say endurance running versus programming calories for um, bike riding versus CrossFit versus the different types of things? Uh, actually, before we do that, sorry, oh indulge me, I know. <laughs> so there's a question to think about while I ask you another question. Okay. So, because you, you don't just... You don't just do uh, look at yourself, Michael, in terms of your, your, your nutrition. You actually actually also like do nutrition for other people, right? At, who don't just necessarily do sports. So, can you tell us a bit more about that? Um. Well, on the day to day, um, I help. It seems to be a lot of women lately. Um, a lot of women, like my mom's age, um, figure out their nutrition so that they can cook for themselves and their family so that they don't have to um, always feel like they're on a diet cooking two separate meals. Yeah. Um, right now I'm working on a fun project and helping my husband out and cooking for him and Pablo, which has been pretty, cool. pretty fun. Um, yeah. the, the cool thing about that is he actually does have to fuel for what he's doing, you know, mm. the, the role that he's doing right now. Um, and it kind of goes hand in hand with Michael's training. Yeah, which and, is intense. yeah, which is cool because a lot of the time you think when you think about that you think oh it's just in the nutrition they just eat well and they kind of they kind of try and lean out or, or go to the gym a bit but you know I've seen some of the work that's been put in and, and the guy trains and yeah. you have to fuel that with some some proper food it's not just a case of like right we'll try and sprinkle fairy dust on that and you magically <laughs> right the cool, the cool thing about Henry is you know whether he thinks so or not he is an athlete you know yeah. he he's done this for a while um, he's He's gone through phases where he does really hard training and, you know, when he's training every day, he can't obviously go hard every day like you and I know. Yeah. Um, so there's days where he goes super hard, days that he lifts super heavy, days that they do a little bit of bodybuilding. And we have to feel for those. And it's nice that Michael and I work hand in hand because, you know, I can see what they're doing for training and we can kind of figure out what he needs on the day, mm. which, you know... It, is really dialed in. We can dial in his nutrition to get him, you know, where he needs to be a little bit faster, a little bit more on point. Yeah. So, and so, uh, fun project. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. I mean, like, what a cool way to just, you get to really see the fruits of your labor in terms of what you're doing from a nutritional point of view, yeah. like almost live, which, yeah. is, which is super um, interesting to me. I mean, the only time I get to see that is really when I test on myself, kind of like, oh, right, that worked, or yeah. oh, that really didn't work. <laughs> No but ben and Jerry's just didn't work. Well, like, what the hell? There are obviously other ice cream uh, companies out there, but like, I don't know, they're my favorite. Maybe something says, we'll see this from Ben and Jerry's and we'll get big and I'll get loads of Ben we and Jerry's. Can, we can make Ben and Jerry's work for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, this is the topic I, I want to eventually get onto. But um, okay. before I do, so tell me a bit more about Shut Up Eat. Like, what was the concept behind the blog? Um, I love to cook. I've always loved to cook. Um, I started Shut Up Eat because I went through a phase where I was kind of moving. I guess my own mindset from, do I want to be the skinny endurance athlete? I mean, I'm 5'8". At one point, I was 116 pounds, wow. which is, you know, stick figure. Very, small. very lean. Right. Yeah, I was, I was not healthy, but I was fast. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to kind of um, show people this transition. Okay, I'm going to gain some weight. And 
I want to be okay with my body. I don't want to just gain some weight and get fat. I want to like fix my metabolism, eat what I want, figure it out so that I can do this in a healthy way. And you know, the nice thing is I had some help from my husband mm. who, you know, is a specialist. Um, and then another friend of mine, Jason Phillips, um, he, I believe he switched his company name to driven now. Okay. So, you know, another really cool source that I had access to. Um, but I wanted to document it. And so I started putting, um, recipes online, mm-hmm. shutupeat.com, um, showing women, you know, this is what I'm eating. It's a normal dish, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the fat, the carbs, the protein so that you can, you know, better keep track for yourself. Yeah, and just that, those macronutrient combinations. If people see them on packets and mm-hmm. they, they, they kind of go, oh, right, I know that there is protein, carbohydrate, and fat in, in what I eat. Mm-hmm. And I think through a lot of miscommunication uh, out there in terms of, like, I don't mean between kind of people who specialize in the subject, but mm-hmm. I mean in, in broader senses in terms of advertising, marketing, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Fat's bad for you. Or, you know, like, you should get, get off carbs if you want to get lean. Like, the, these kind of messages that have been out there, and, you know, I think a lot of people that have, before they've got to more of a professional outlook on their training or the nutrition, mm-hmm. have kind of just gone, well, I'm just going to go on a no, no carb or low carb, high protein diet with no fat or high fat. And, and they paleo. played, yeah, paleo <laughs> stuff and non like, slight variations on the paleo model. Mm-hmm. And it's a bit of a minefield unless you, like, you know, you speak to someone like yourself, a professional, or Michael, and, and get some real advice about that. Right, and it definitely depends on what you're doing. You yeah. know, if you're pretty sedentary and you know you have an office job, and maybe you get to the gym twice a week, or maybe you're just doing, you know, not really heavy breathing, but you know, normal moving around once or twice a week at the gym. Paleo is great. Um, I feel, and I'm sure, you know, I'm gonna have a ton of people coming back to me and saying, "Oh, you're not correct," but. I really don't think paleo works for CrossFit. It's not enough carbohydrate. CrossFit's very fast burn, um, and I feel like carbohydrates give you that fast burn. Yeah, so. I, I agree for what it's worth. Yeah, <laughs> um, okay. I, I think, and I only agree because I, all I can go by, generally this is how I kind of figure stuff out, is like if I try something mm-hmm. and I see the results in myself, right. then I can be like, well, it didn't work for me. And then if I speak to other people like yourself mm-hmm. and other trained coaches and, and athletes and talk to them about it and other nutrition companies and they're all kind of saying the similar kind of thing and we're all doing the similar kind of thing then I think that that proves the rule a little bit so whether people right. have a different opinion if it works for you amazing yeah like that's the thing is this is it's just still it's we, we, I, I, actually I'll ask it as a question would you say that the kind of whole carbohydrate the whole calorie and macronutrient thing is a best guess to a degree like you, you never really 100% know like you can get can you get like quite dialed into it, but do you know it's 100% that this is going to work for every person? No. Um, some people are fat burners, some people are carbohydrate burners. Yeah. Um, from from what I've gathered, um, it seems like people do better on higher carb, lower fat. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you talk to like an endurance athlete that's like, gosh, I just need some kind of slower burning fuel to get me through, you know, a 24 mile run, which I get because I used to run my Saturday run was 26 miles yeah. and I was eating a lot of fat. I don't think I could have done it the other way. And so, you know, at the time I feel like I was a fat burner. Um, but now I feel like more carbs. I feel like I've switched it. And I think it, that it all depends on what you're doing and, and what you feel good with. Yeah. I've, I've tried to go back to high fat now doing, you know, CrossFit stuff. And I feel so slow and sluggish mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I've tried to play around with it a little bit and I don't feel good personally, but that doesn't mean, you know, the next person won't feel great on a paleo diet. Yeah, for sure. And there's a case to be stated, again, I'll get your opinion on this, this is kind of, again, from stuff I've heard and, and, and from talking to people, that because we can adapt, so like our bodies can just adapt to stuff. So sure. if you feed it on fat for long enough, you can potentially convert that, that, that energy source, right? Right. So it's, it's. I don't think it's necessarily, it's, it's, it's again, it's difficult because some people are like, well, I tried it and it didn't work. It's like, well, how long did you give it? What did you test? How did you test for it? And stuff like that. So I think I think patience comes into it a little bit with, with all this nutrition. Would you, yeah, is that a fair statement? You definitely have to be patient. I mean, it coming from endurance sports and being so lean and then not running anymore and ballooning up and being like, oh my gosh, I'm not eating very many calories. Why am I gaining so much weight? You know, I'm really fixing my metabolism. Gosh, it took me... And I know that some 
you know, some of my clients in the past that have done bikini shows, but just do the, the constant up and down. I won't, I won't train girls that aren't getting ready for bikini shows anymore because they just don't think it's healthy. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, it does take patience. Like your metabolism needs to rest and you just got to fix it. And you need to show your body that it's okay. We're going to feed you again, you know, or else it's just going to hold on to everything. Yeah. So it took me about a year and a half to really fix my metabolism after wow. running. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's good, good, uh, like the attack can take longer, like that's pretty, it's pretty good time frame from, again, from what the limit in which I have on it, but it sounds, Right. Oh, that, that's pretty pretty sweet. Some people Especially kind of like it felt like a lot. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, these things take taken uh, a decent chunk of time. Right. I think, I think we're kind of would you, we can be maybe a little bit criticised as a society for having this more like get like fixed quick kind of mentality towards health and fitness now right. and nutrition to a degree as well. Like, well, I'll just I'll just stop eating these you know pizzas once a week and oh that will that'll, that'll help it surely <laughs> like well what else are you doing kind of comes into frame a little bit yeah i mean it takes it takes a while i mean you you really need at least six weeks i think yeah. i mean when you're younger so when you're 19 you're like all right i'm just not going to eat that thing for a couple of days and then you go eat again yeah um everyone's gonna have Damn it. Issues. yeah <laughs> what happened you know, why we mess everything up like <laughs> as we get older because we diet and then we overfeed and we diet and we overfeed and we do all this other weird stuff that, you know, abuse our bodies, like yeah. what we do in here, training and, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's it, all stress, right? Yeah. It's stress related and it takes a minute to, to heal and get back to normal state. Um, but you know, it shouldn't be that far off. Like right now, if, if I cut my calories, you know, a couple hundred a, a day or, you know, dial back 10% of my calories for a couple weeks, I'll lose weight just like I used to, wow. which is, you know, that, that's good. That's yeah, yeah, that sure. healthy metabolism. So. And that's a good way of testing, would you say, mm -hmm. as well, like a healthy metabolism. Like, okay, we'll dial down your calories a little bit and how how quickly does that weight start to drop off or how quickly do you notice a difference in your in your body? I mean, it, sh it should within a couple of days. Yeah. You know, if you dial back, but you don't want to... A general rule for, you know, long term is you don't want to dial back more than 10% okay. of your calories. So... Uh, you know, if you dial it back more than that and you're dropping like, you know, five pounds a week, it's probably too fast. Yeah. It's for sure too fast. You're just going to gain it back. Yeah. Um, I, kind of what's, what's the relationship with cutting too many calories and then weight? Because I've had some people that are like, I just can't, I just can't shift it. I feel tired all the time. What's going on? And you, it's hard to say, well, are you eating enough? And people are, just can't get, seem to process that information sometimes. I well, think. One, one thing that I've had to learn that's been... <laughs> kind of tricky and actually Jason Phillips worked with me a lot on this is you have to have a bigger base to start from okay like if you are coming in and you're only eating 900 which some girls only eat 900 calories a day 900 to 1200 calories meal. yeah exactly <laughs> um and then you're dialing back from there well you don't really have anywhere to pull from like you're yeah. already in a state of starvation yeah like your metabolism is not working because you're it's just trying to function as is um, it can't handle the stress, and so you're either going to drop weight and gain it right back, like fast, and hold on to water. Um, yeah, you you have to dial back a little bit slower than that. <laughs> yeah, and that's and I think that's a good message for for people, especially our members and stuff. In regards to we do the you know, as you know peak and base kind of for our training, and actually there's almost an aspect of that you build your base with all the ten, the lifts you. Build right. up the technical lifts, you build up the technical gymnastics, but actually you need to also build and, and you build your engine, but you also need to build your nutritional um, base as well. And I think that's kind of a good message is that sometimes people just think that you can quickly turn things on and off. Well, one way that I did it um, when I first started is I added about 10 grams of carbs a day. Okay. So I kept my protein at my body weight. So that's a good, a good rule of thumb. Um, so I set mine at 135 to start. So made sure to get in 135 grams of protein every day. Um, the rest of my calories were filled in with pro or fat and carbs. Um, and then after that, I just added a little bit of carbs every week, every week, a little bit more, a little bit more. Maybe one week I would keep it the same. The next week I would jump up and I'd mm. weigh myself every day. All right. Am I heavier? Am I lighter? Am I staying the same? And I got to the point where I was eating a mass amount of carbohydrates, like, 280 grams of carbohydrates a day 
but I was staying the same weight. So my body was really, you know, I sent a message to my body that I'm not going to starve myself anymore. Mm. So I started to be able to use what I was eating in here, like lift weights, work out, train. And I was, I started to use it. So I started to feel a lot better. Um, and then from there, you know, I'm eating so many more calories. Now I do have somewhere to pull from. So I think I, the most I ever got up to was about 20, 2,800 calories a day. And I was staying the same weight, which is cool. Yeah. But then when I started to dial it down, you know, I saw some weight loss, some good, healthy weight loss. And I haven't tried to dial it down like really, really far, but yeah. I like to cook, you know, I could eat. Yeah, and I, <laughs> but I could, you know. Yeah, if you wanted want to, to go cook. super lean, you could go super lean. I think that's cool yeah. though that, that you talk about, I think we'll move, start moving into this area, but like talking about, well, you get to eat, you get to eat well, you get to eat what you want. Like you're, right. not, you're not just going, right, I've got to eat the same old stuff all right. the time. Um, I think that's kind of the, the cool thing. Well, it's boring. And no one's <laughs> ever going to maintain that. Yeah. You know, who's going to say, okay, I'm going to be on the whole 30 for the rest of my life? Well, there's a reason why it's called the whole 30 because it's really hard to go past that you yeah. know people who get on these diets or a food challenge they want it to end they want it to be over and when it's over they binge they binge drink they binge eat and so there needs to be some kind of healthy medium where you know you're okay eating a treat every once in a while and it's not gonna break you emotionally yeah for sure and i think you bring up a good topic like some people start as a as an athlete or, or as training as an individual and then they you know get a partner or get married or have a family and then they're like well actually i've got to start providing food for these people and i have to try and balance that with my own life and that becomes more difficult it's like as a single dude with no, no no kids or anything i'm like great i just eat what this is what i need to eat i'm going to eat this but if i had to worry about you know, from get having food with someone else right. all the time, unless someone's like very similar in terms of what I'm eating, my macronutrients, I'd be, I'd be pretty screwed. I think I'd, be, I'd have to go, go back to the drawing board a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's been interesting with Michael and I because we haven't always eaten the same things. Because you know, sometimes he's riding a bike. When we first started dating, he was riding a lot, and I was, you know, doing a little bit of cross training and a little bit of running, a little bit of biking, and our diets were a little bit different. Um, so, Michael, when Michael goes and does a movie and he's away, um, I feel like my diet is pretty on point. <laughs> yeah. Um, when he comes home, you know, we, I, I try to be, um, I try to be a little bit uh, workable with him on, on what he needs. But the main point being, like, we can still eat together as a family and I don't have to make, like, 10 million separate meals. Sometimes he gets two chicken breasts and I get you know, a little bit less butter on whatever, you know, we can kind of like mess with it within our meal, yeah. but it's not like I'm cooking my family spaghetti and Parmesan and I'm making chicken and broccoli for myself. Yeah. Good old chicken and broccoli. Yeah. And that's, that's just not a life for anyone. And for it, sure. Yeah. And we've all tried it. I'm guessing that <laughs> most people listening to this that are into fitness and do some kind of fitnessing as, uh, as Michael would say, have, uh, I've definitely done like I'm just gonna eat chicken, broccoli, maybe some brown rice. Yeah. I'm feeling exciting. And and that's you know it's a good meal, but it's not <laughs> every day. Thing that you want to eat every day, I'm sure. For sure. Can you just wheel the mic just a little bit closer to you? Just oh. put it in. That's it. Perfect. It's just we get a bit more echo here. Oh, um, sorry. So, that's alright. Um, so general rule of thumb, then you're saying for for people that need to make sure that they're looking after their carb, fat, protein diet go with protein in terms of looking kind of roughly at your body weight and sticking there and and then you know diet, if you're doing more endurance stuff you can look at more fats and if you're doing more kind of heavy duty kind of crossfit stuff looking at diving up the carbs a little bit um for general rule of thumb yes yeah um one thing that i have noticed from playing around with my own diet is um you don't want to have your fat high while your carbohydrates are high so you gotta you gotta do one or the other okay. you can't do them both at the same time it's going to overload your liver. You're just going to feel sluggish and fat and disgusting. So, <laughs> yeah, so pick one. Um, if you're going to go high fat, dumb down your carbs a little bit. Um, and then if you're going to go the other direction, dumb down your, your fat a little bit. Perfect. Yeah. And that's where I'm at right now. Um, I try to eat a little bit less fat right now and a higher carbs, especially since we're, we've got some competitions that we're yeah. doing. Um, 
I'm recovering from. Just got back from the <laughs> French Rodan. Yeah. Little side note, how was that? Have fun? Um, yeah, it was fun. There was a language barrier. Um, <laughs> we got in an argument with one of my judges. But yeah, other than that, it was great. The team was great. It was super fun. Um, awesome. It was a great comp. It was really well organized. Yeah, I've heard it was like one of the best ones that yeah, our team have been to, just organizing wise. And yeah, big, big, big deal. Right, right. It was, it was awesome. Nice. It was pretty fun. We did okay. <laughs> yeah, you guys did rock it. Yeah. Some, some awesome pictures as well. Come back from it. Yeah. Nice work. Michael did individual and um, team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We thought we were gonna lose Michael at one point, but he. I've done 18 workouts in one day, what's going on? Yeah, he's like, I can't control my body temperature. I'm like, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) Carry the pop tart. Yeah, yeah, his love for pop tarts will never never wane, doesn't matter how many workouts he does. Oh, well, pop tarts are great for recovery. Yeah? Pure carbs, there's not very much fiber, so. Yeah, they um. Every, everyone, everyone listen. Stop listening to this podcast. So they're taking their headphones off and they run to go and get some pop tarts for after their workout now. But you know, it's it's pure carbohydrates. Yeah. I mean, it's pure sugar. I wouldn't sit around and eat pop tarts all the time. I don't think that it's you know a nutritious food that you should be fueling your body with on a daily basis. But for after hard effort, why not? Yeah, and this is something I want to come on to. Okay. Um. So this is the. There's a big principle about like the um, the gains meal, if you like. You know that the best time to go big with your carbs um, is all right after a workout because your glycogen stores have been depleted and you want to replace those with carbs that convert into sugar and that kind of a jazz, right? That's my kind of like Jalzy's taking right. this high level <laughs> stuff and just interpreted it to his kind of understanding. Right. Um, I like to eat carbohydrates like before I'm doing a competition, like. If I really care about my performance, I need something to to work off of. Okay. And I want it to be sh- pure sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Just me personally, you know, I want something that's like, okay, I feel better about myself. I'm gonna eat some sugar. Yeah. And it's gonna give me that buzz to go out there for, you know, three to twelve minutes and do the best that I can. Okay. Um, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to eat a big load of carbohydrates. Um. And something that we found is, you know, if you're doing something like a CrossFit competition where there's multiple events throughout the day, you don't want something fibrous. Um, you don't want anything that's going to like bulk up and digest in your stomach. And have you got any kind of general uh, examples that people you see people using quite a lot? You're like, why? why, why? That's <laughs> totally fibrous. That's that word. Um, I quite like that word. That's a pretty cool word. Fibrous. Oh, like. A couple people in our group had, um, and I'm not gonna like name a meal prep brand because I don't know a lot of them out here. Yeah. Um, but you know, their little food prep box with, you know, peppers and onions and tomatoes and meat and a little bit of rice and you know, brown rice. Yeah. Well, gosh, we had like a big thing of just plain chicken and white rice. And it's like, we want that white rice so that it digests fast. Um, We use the glucose from it immediately. Brown rice, it's just, the rice is in its little shell, and so it takes you a little bit longer to break it down. It's, you know, you'll use it for longer. It's great if you are gonna eat after a workout and then, you know, not do anything for a while, be sedentary for a while. Um, But if you just want like fast energy or fast recovery, do white rice, do a little bit of chicken. A little bit, you don't need a lot. Um, just to get that energy level back back up, basically. right? But I, I don't know. Nightshades like peppers, onion, or pepper tomatoes just doesn't sound good. Like right after a workout, right, right. after a hard hot run, yeah. does like a bowl full of peppers and tomatoes sound good? <laughs> no. um, it's just not going to do anything for you. Okay, that's good to know. I think that's, that's good tips. And then speaking to you know more general athletes who you know maybe not compete, but they they kind of. They do some of the some of the fitness stuff, um, a bit of CrossFit. They want something for before or after their workout. What would you What would you go with there? And and, and we haven't talked about supplements yet, so I'm guessing that maybe not any supplements. Like, um, well, I like pre workouts. Every once in a while, I'll do some, um, you know, some aminos. But I'm not huge on supplements. I do. Me either. I take a a protein. Um, every once in a while, I'm from Utah, and so. We have long winters. If I'm feeling really down, I'll do like a vitamin B supplement or mm. vitamin D. Um, 
I don't see if I'm traveling. I, I just am not a big supplement person. Not a lot. If there's yeah. not one thing that I take on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, a good rule of thumb for people that are just coming in, they just want a good sweat, they don't necessarily care about PR in their snatch or their squat. Um, I like to work out fasted. Yeah. So fasted workout um, or a little bit of protein before the, your workout, a little bit of carbs after your workout with a little bit of protein. Um, good general rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the fasted workout is an interesting one, and it, I think it depends on time of day for me yeah. personally. Like, if it, if I'm getting up super early in the morning and mm-hmm. I've got a train right away, maybe I'll do it fast because I just don't feel like my body is awake enough to start breaking down food. Right. Um, and I'll try and eat like, I mean, I always eat before I go to bed anyway. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I try I try and make sure I have some decent before then, so I've still got some some of that leftover energy. But right. Um, in the in the morning yeah but like lunch time so it depends i think it depends kind of like if it fits into your day if it fits into your usual schedule then training fast is kind of cool i think it also depends on um what your temperament is um yeah that's I, point. I when i was trying to gain a little bit of weight and just getting used to eating more than 1500 calories a day for at one point 1500 calories a day felt like i was you know eating thanksgiving dinner <laughs> all day long i yeah. just felt like so many calories your body's coming. like trying to break all yeah, this stuff down like, like laying on the couch with my pants on, <laughs> like, I'm so full yeah but now I'm like gosh I could eat that like four times over yeah yeah um I think you know temperament is a big one I like to sit down and eat a bunch of carbs in one meal and feel like I just ate a ton I'm not gonna eat the rest of the day yeah um but when I was trying to eat you know trying to get my calories in I had to start early so I'd wake up and eat oatmeal or you know eat something just to get it the eating going. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, no, I hear. Um, right now, I don't mind fasting. I kind of snack a little bit in the morning while I'm cooking. Um, yeah, we were talking about this before. I was doing a bit of yeah. sound check and I asked Erin what she, what she had for breakfast and she was like, nothing really. I was cooking for other people so I just started snacking and, and right. kind of had some coffees. I do snack. I try, I, I try to like limit my snacking while I cook but I have to taste things to make sure that they're Good. Not poison. <laughs> um, it's, uh, as a as some, a nutritionist, someone does, does nutrition for a living. It's probably best not to poison people. I mean, I've heard that that's like <laughs> a good place to start. Yeah, it's, yeah. it'd probably be bad if we if we killed some of our clients right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where do we hide the bodies? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I I like fasted work now or okay. fasted workouts. Um, if I come in here to do comping, probably not going to be my best performance. Yeah. Um, if I'm on a squat program, I like to eat something, you know, heavy carbs before I go and do that. Just because I'm really shooting for a PR, you know, if it's not every week, every two weeks. Yeah. And so I'll pay a little bit more attention to, you know, fueling that particular Yeah, program. fueling performance as opposed to just fueling for, for kind of everyday life as it, as it were. And I think that's a bit of a difference as well that people start to change in terms of when they've been doing something like CrossFit for a while and they, they've they got past the, hey, I just want to look better or feel better um, or, or just be a bit fitter. And they kind of go, actually, I want to I PR. I, like, they know where their numbers are and they start to want to work for performance. And then you think you need to, again, take another look at your nutrition and be like, right, what do I need to change? Because um, if you're i will give the example, if, if literally you're within your first six months of CrossFit or first six months of doing like hard physical workouts, like where you're working out every day, you're training quite a lot, you're learning a lot of skills, you're in that base platform, and then you go to more of a peak platform where you want to PR a lot, you're, you're trying to get performance, maybe you're looking at competitions, and then I think the old model of what your nutrition was needs to then be looked at again of like, where do I, how do I evolve it? It doesn't, once you fixed it, it doesn't mean that it's done forever, you kind of need to evolve it, right? Right. Um, I mean, my diet has changed so much over the past six years. I, I've pretty much been tracking my calories on, you know, a daily basis for almost almost seven years now. Yeah. So I have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't for me personally. Um, and I'm to the point now where, you know, if I'm going to go out on a 40 minute run, just leisurely with my dog, who is slow, sometimes I have to carry him home. Well, you know, <laughs> um, I'm not going to eat before. I might not even have to eat after. You yeah. Know, it's just what it is. I'm not going to have to recover from a 12 minute mile pace. Yeah. You know, so I think it's learning what, what your body needs, you know, to recover. Is that an effort for you? Is it a hard effort for you? Um, you know, if running for the bus is your same pace 
as you know walking down the street then you probably don't need to recover from that yeah you need to be eating all, all day long <laughs> yeah for sure yeah um and then in terms of like one of the things that we've talked about and one of the things that you're great at is, is being able to mix your um, macronutrients or your calorie intake so that you can have the food you want you're a bit of a kind of like you know a ninja when it comes to that's how, that's how your husband described you anyway in terms of being able to like fit in the cheat meal or like a cheat meal or you know pick, eat, eat the things you want to eat be able to like mix things up so that you can you can fit around what, what macronutrients right. you need to. so how, how do you do that what's, what's your kind of like Aaron's guide to being able to eat pizza or donuts or whatever whatever um, terms of food wise. Honestly, I'm not a huge pizza fan. No? No. I know some people are obsessed with it, but I could go forever without it. Um, so, it, it took me a long time to realize, like, your body doesn't know the difference between a banana and, you know, a piece of chocolate, except for chocolate probably has a little bit more fat in it. So, you know, Jason Phillips, who was kind of coaching me through some of my emotional eating, yeah, because, you know, I was at the point where if I ate a cookie, it was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do the rest of the week? I, I ate a cookie. Yeah, I only chuckle, and not at you, it's because, like, I think, you know, if we're honest, we've all kind of been there with some oh, yeah. kind of food or beer or something like, oh For no, sure. why? I didn't really want to, oh no. I would, I would put into my calorie tracker what I just ate, like a piece of cheesecake or whatever it was, and I would go and, like, hit that many calories on the stairs supper. Like, I used to kind of be a little bit crazy about that. Yeah. But it, I think it, people have been there, though. It's not, it's, it, it's right. crazy, but again, it's it's something that a lot of people do. Uh, you, you, especially if you've been to a global gym, you're watching a lot of people, you're oh, like, sure. they're getting off <laughs> specific times. But how is that different than, how is a piece of cheesecake any different from, like, a potato with a little bit of butter on it? And somehow that's okay, or sweet potato with a little bit of butter on yeah. it. Um, you know, the dairy is still there, um, still carbohydrates, so your body can't really tell the difference between the two. Obviously, one has more fiber, one might have a little bit more nutrition, but your body can't tell the difference. So, people who say, oh, I'm eating clean, well, try it the other way and see how big of a difference it makes, in composition at least. Because mm. um, you're probably not going to notice it in performance, unless, you know, you're a little bit lactose intolerant or something else messes with you, like you eat a big milkshake or something and yeah. you know you're my little brother who used to eat milkshakes after college soccer games and go and pee his guts out well maybe you shouldn't eat milk you know yeah, for sure um, i've got a sister who's actually a food, food blogger as well we talked a bit about her in the, in the first podcast yeah and uh yeah she changed her diet just because it was making her ill like she'd get right. like glandular fever and get ill all the time and she was like i'm gonna, I'm gonna chuck gluten out and then like took out refined sugars and again went dairy free and it just mm-hmm. It's completely changed her energy levels, like she wasn't getting yeah. sick all the time. And you know, so it's not that you have to do that to be healthy, but right. sometimes that can it, it can be something like sugar. Sugar is quite a, quite a common one that I think that it can mess people up if they get the to- the tolerances wrong, wrong a bit. For sure. And one of my downfalls is I actually feel pretty good eating sugar. <laughs> I mean, I've I've eaten like sugary things yeah. and felt almost leaner the next day, and I don't. I can't figure out why. I don't know if maybe I just needed to recover from something. Mm. That does not mean go out and eat some cake, go out and eat that every single day. Yeah. But, you know, I think that once you get to the point where you're doing, you know, heavy heavy training every single day, sometimes doing two days, like you might not know how much your body's burning unless you have some fancy gadget like Michael has that tells you yeah. what, what your body's using, what your output is. Um, you know, you might need a little bit of extra recovery for your body to say, okay, now I'm recovered. I don't have to hold on to all this water. I don't have to hold on to all this weight. Um, and some people are a little bit more sensitive to like dairy, sugar, Mm. um, gluten, carbohydrates. So, um, I think the biggest misconception though is like Zac Efron just did a, an article about getting lean and he was generally saying, you know, now that I've been training a little bit, harder for a little bit longer my body just it doesn't crave sweets anymore it craves sweet potatoes and kale well those are still carbohydrates and sugar yeah you know and so you're still you just switched one carbohydrate and sugar to another carbohydrate and yeah. sugar. one's labeled bad one's okay for some reason. yeah and i think that's more about the yeah. subconscious connection to those things like right. your body's craving them and you've been eating that so your your subconscious is like i now want this yeah 
And it's not because you you have managed to switch to, oh, right, I'm eating good stuff. And my body wants good stuff now. It's just that that's what you're associating with. Your body's associating with those things that it craves. Right, right. Um, and I think that's where it, he, 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 his observation almost could have been that, but he's misinter- I think he's maybe misinterpreted the signals of that, right. like in terms of you're still, your still, body still wants the same things, you just associate it to different stuff. Right. And, that, you know, I don't think treats are bad. Um, put, put a treat into your calorie tracker. Like mm. if, you, if you decide, I would encourage everyone to track for a week if you haven't tracked. Just, you know, see how, see what you're getting. You might not be getting enough protein in every day to you know, feel what you're doing. Um, but I would encourage everyone to go and just track for a week. Um, and then maybe at the end of the week, put in a piece of cake and try to dial in the rest of your macros according to eating that cake, you know, add that in there and kind of play with your, your lunch and your dinner. And it's not going to be the end of the world. No. And that's kind of what I want people to, I want to show people with my blog is, you know, there's cake on there. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Eat a treat. Go to a birthday party. Eat cake. Go to a you know family yeah. party. Don't bring your own buff box to your family party. Eat your mom's food. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Don't for make sure. Feel that. Um, but calculate it so that you can yeah you know decide what you're gonna eat the rest of the day to kind of fit that thing in there that you really want to eat. Yeah, yeah, bit of a shout out to that to Buff, Buff Box who actually I have I do my nutrition with those guys so they're, they're, oh, yeah. they're kind of yeah they're, they're friends of friends of mine uh, friends of the I'm gonna say friends of the show why not um, hopefully the hopefully they'll come down and uh, we'll get them on Monday as well I think it'd be cool to uh, more more than Mario on this podcast I, I haven't tried Buff Box no? but I, I see it in the fridge yeah yeah well it's probably mine <laughs> yeah. sometimes I I pull things. Uh, in the box and put in the fridge as people are leaving. I'm like, why is this my job now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's a few out there. I know that um, a couple of the guys here work with Zone Nutrition and stuff as well. Who, yeah, cool. um, um, and there's a, there's a few um, Body Plus, and there's, there's a few right. options out there. And but certainly, if you speak to any of the coaches, we're all using one. Um, and, it, and I think that it, again comes down to who works best for you in well, terms of yeah, how, of how their system works. Because everyone's got a slightly different take on it. And yeah. None of them have. That are wrong or bad from what I can discern. They've just got their slightly different take, and it, that's how it applies to what you want out of your right. nutrition. And I haven't researched a ton of the, well, any of them, I guess. I just know like the buzzwords, buff box. Yeah. What was the other the one? Brand names. Zone Nutrition. Zone. Yeah. I feel like there's another one that someone was using. Body Plus. Okay, body 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 plus. Yeah, yeah. So those are the main three at, at Perpetua. I think that it just depends on, you know, are they using clean oils, which. I don't know if they are not, but yeah. I, I, again, I, hopefully they'll come down. We can ask them. <laughs> right, yeah. um, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they are from from conversations I've had. So I, I think right. like there's a whole preparation that goes around it. You keep cooking to the right temperature, right. freezing to the right temperature at the right time, and all that kind of stuff. Naturally and then, sourced stuff, and, and which is a big another big thing that I want to talk to you about is sourced ingredients. How much how much weight do you put onto that? Like where you're getting your like where you're getting your meat from. And that kind of stuff. Like, is it really is it important? Should people be aiming for free range? Like, what's your take on that? Um, I think so. I think Michael would have a, a different opinion because when it comes down to you know breaking everything down on a on a cellular level, it it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, grass fed is going to have a little bit more nutrition. He agrees with me on that. Um, I personally like to support local just because that's kind of what I grew up with. Yeah, um, I, I, I just think it's kind of cool yeah. as well. Like, let's help each other. Yeah, exactly. Um, it kind of freaks me out to buy a steak from, you know, living in the U.S., buying a steak from somewhere clear across, you know, the world. Yeah, like okay. a big a big supermarket or a big, like, you know, big chain. That, that well, just... I just feel like it's been packed and yeah. shipped over, and it's like, gosh, we have meat here. Yeah. You know, let's put it through the least amount of process as possible. Yeah, it's, for sure. You know, there to my table. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I believe in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I would much rather eat something that came from my neighbor's yard than something that came from, you know, I don't want to say any particular place, but yeah, you know, yeah. somewhere far away. Yeah, I think everyone knows the, the big supermarkets that, yeah. you know, it comes from somewhere else and it gets kept in a big warehouse, frozen warehouse, and then it gets shipped to here and then it gets right. cut up and it gets shipped to here. You kind of think, well, how long ago was this was this eating grass in the field? Exactly. Um, and I think I would want to get on this big social issue, but I think there's a bit of a weird disconnection between us and us and what we're eating. Um, and I'm like, 
like if I I live in a city, so it's pretty hard for me to be able to like you know, raise my own cattle and then and right. then kill that cattle and eat it. But like, right. but I would. I like, I'd be quite happy to to like farm my own would stuff you? if I need to. Yeah, I'd be pretty. You could kill and, and eat. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, mean, I think that every meat eater be, should be able to do that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It'd be really weird and hard the first time, I think, just being like, well, I'm going to kill this. Okay. But it, it's it's well, kind of law of nature a little bit. you found something deer in the city that you killed and ate. Yeah. 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 A fox. Oh, such <laughs> a a pigeon. Movie. Yeah. It would, right. not be, it would not be a good meal. Well, from Utah, we It's, it's really naturally been fed on, you know, <laughs> rubbish and uh, some garbage and it's stuff on the floor. a lot of nutrition here. Yeah. Um, coming from Utah, we have quite a bit of hunting. All, all of our friends hunt. Yeah. I personally have not hunted. No. I've fished a bunch. No. Yeah. I think Michael and I when we get back, I think he needs to get. I, I, I'm. I'd re- go out. Yeah, I'd be really keen for that. And then, and this is I, I listen to I'm gonna just name him Joe Rogan's podcast a lot. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of his. Cool. And um, he he's like pro hunting, and it's not a case of like going out and killing for sport. It's a case of going out and. and like there are certain animals that literally are overpopulating right. certain areas, and you you have to control them just because otherwise they kill off other things. Like bear kill a lot of moose. Right. So if you don't hunt bears, no, like you end up with not ha- they're going to kill the animals anyway, and it's part of nature. We just right. happen to, you know, without getting into big debate about this, there's going to be some vegans screaming at their their I monitor right now. I feel like I can speak from both ends. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's, uh, and from. And it's difficult because I haven't, normally I'm like, well, I'm going to try both sides. I'm going to find, like, be, you know, so I can speak evenly and I haven't been vegan. And I don't think I ever would just because of how important I feel meat is in terms of my dietary needs and also right. just in terms of who I am. So right. it's something I'm not willing to compromise. But it's cool to have someone that I can speak to about that that has done. Um, I think that it's important to be able to go out and hunt and be able to, you know, emotionally see what it feels like to actually take the life of something and eat it. Mm. I think that if you're going to eat meat, you need to know how that feels. And I think that you're going to appreciate, you know, that process a little bit better. Um, I agree with you 100%. I think that I need meat. I think that athletes need meat. I know that some have done it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's nothing to take away from there. are plenty right. of people out there who look great one and perform well on a vegan diet. And, I think it comes back to what works for you. If that works for you, cool. I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't be. I'm just saying that it doesn't work for me. And if I was recommending to a general athlete that is a meat eater, I would not start saying, well, you need to go, go vegan or anything like that. I think it's about what works for you and, and you as an individual. If you want to do that, then there are ways of doing it. But I think it's, I think it's harder. Is your sister vegan? No. No? Okay. No, no, no. We, like, we like meat in our family. We're quite, quite, okay. quite on, the, um, on, the, on the meat wagon now. Yeah. yeah, okay, cool. I am... Um... I loved being vegan. I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, as soon as I started wanting to progress in learning, yeah. um, I was training a little bit harder. I just was so lethargic. And so just from a performance standpoint and like how I felt on day to day, and it was really hard for me to start eating meat again, yeah. but I felt so much better. It was almost like, <clears throat> I don't know, like drinking a cup of coffee after eating a piece of fish. <clears throat> and thinking like, wow, I'm getting so much energy from this thing. I must really, really need it. Mm. Um, and that's just me personally. I have a lot of vegan friends who are still vegan that love it. And yeah, it's uh, it, for sure how, it works for them. It however, just you want to work for me. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like I said, I'm leaning into the, the bigger debate, but I, th- I think that's kind of in- interesting to right. just be like, look, this is this is what works for us. This is why we do. This is why the decision we've made. Um, but also, if this is zombie apocalypse. I, I want to be able to. I want to be able to eat still, so I'm going to need to be able to, you know, yeah, do, Your body do a bit of hunting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure, just live on grass. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing it. Um. So in terms of like a more more CrossFit athletes, you, you just think that in terms of sugar and things like that, we can use them as fuel. We just got to be. Be careful in terms of making sure we're counting our macros, counting our calories, making sure we're getting the right intake, and then you can you can be flexible with that kind of stuff. Uh, just back to that, kind of round that off, because again, I think that's important for a lot of people listening. I know I speak to a lot of people about in the box, kind of like make big shifts all of a sudden. You're like, no, just just start to make the small changes and definitely use it as a tool. I mean, yeah. don't sit around and eat, do do your workout and then eat sugar for the rest of the day, which is hard because sugar is. 
super, super addicting. Yeah. Like once you eat something sweet, you just want it the rest of the day. At least I do personally. Yeah. Um, but use it as a tool. Use it as a recovery right after your workout. Um, it is it's you know, great for building muscles. It is what you build muscle, and it's your fastest recovery. So, yeah. you know, use it and then cut it off the rest of the day. Yeah. After your workout. Yeah. And uh, have you got any top tips for kind of how to do that? Is it literally just just willpower the hell out of it and you know yeah <laughs> I put, mean put your big boy or big girl pants on and, and deal with the issue I read a great article about um, oh, I cannot remember what it was and it's not even Michael posted on his Facebook page actually you can probably go find it um, taking the emotion out of eating because most emotional eaters will eat a lot of carbohydrates a lot of fat um, take the emotion out of it like just you know don't feel bad about eating a cookie but also take the emotion out of it. So use it as fuel, um, and then, yeah, cut it off. And don't feel bad about it. If you come back to it later in the night and chocolate granola or whatever, yeah. you know, you crave before bed. Yeah, yeah, sure. um, but yeah, willpower. <laughs> willpower, willpower. Okay. Um, one way of getting around it, because I do love treats, and I tend to like them at night, is uh, protein pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is. I, I also do the pancakes before bed. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's always a way to manipulate around it. Um, yeah. I shouldn't say it, just willpower. Um, yeah, protein pancakes. There's no carbs, or there doesn't have to be carbs. Yeah. Um, I have a recipe for protein pancakes on my site. Um, and yeah, have that be your snack. Don't binge out on daddy chips or, yeah. you know, some kind of high carb thing. Like, make it work for you and don't feel like you're depriving yourself. Cool. And just quickly on the whole supplement thing, we briefly talked about it. Oh, yeah. If you are going to supplement, like, what kind of things should you take and when should you take them? Um, and why should you take them? I think that there's a bit of a, um, sometimes I see people taking shakes and I'm like, I think that's it. Well, I wonder what's in that. And I necessarily wonder if they're taking the right thing at the right time. They're just taking a shake because they kind of perceived, <laughs> I, I, I need, I've done a work, I need a shake. Right. So I use supplements kind of like supplemental work at the gym. Yeah. So let's say you do your workout and you're like, oh man, I haven't, you know, my elbows are hurting because I've been snatching so much. I should probably work my triceps a little bit. So you add some so triceps stuff. Yeah. So that's a supplemental thing that you add in. Mm -hmm. So think of supplements, dietary supplements the same. So always go for real food first. Your body recognizes that the best, it uses it, breaks it down, it knows what to do with it. So, um, you know, the one thing that, might need to supplement is, is protein. A lot of people are low on protein. So if you're not hitting your protein macros during the day, drink a shake at night. Um, or I like my shake right before I work out, especially if I've been fasting in the morning or if I've been cooking and you know I haven't eaten anything, I'll go. That's when I'll have a protein shake. Cool. And so, what kind of things do you put in that? Is it just straight up protein and some straight up protein. water, coconut, <laughs> coconut water, anything like that? Um, uh, Almond milk, man. What's in, what's in the Erin shake? Sometimes I'll do a coconut, a coconut water, but I would rather just save my carbohydrate macros for something more delicious than that. Um, so yeah, I'll just do water. Water. I'll find a protein that tastes really good with just blended with water and ice. Um, and then BCAAs throughout my workout, aminos throughout my workout. Um, it, you know, if I feel like it. Like I said, I'm not big on, on supplements, so if yeah. I don't take it one day, it's not the end of the world. And with BCAAs, you can kind of you can kind of put a little extra in, and it doesn't really do much to you. You right. kind of get rid of the rest of your waste, right? So you can, if you're a bit not sure, you can kind of dial them up a little bit. Yeah, you're not going to overdo it with amino. Okay. So. I, if you can hear the hand dryer in the background, Coach Mike's just been working out. He's just walked in, and now he's in the hand dryer. So if you hear extra noise, blame Coach Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he's, been, he's been filtering around. Um, um, so, and then, you know, like I said, if you don't hit your protein macros, which is like the number one thing that you want to hit throughout the day, um, it's really going to affect composition as well. Yeah. So if you're you know, not only caring about performance, but also about composition, you want to make sure you're hitting your protein um, every single day. So do a shake at night too, if you're not quite there. Mix yeah. up some body and yogurt. Okay. I like protein and yogurt it's a good little treat at the end of the night yeah I, I occasionally um post-workout something like, something 
um, basketball skating. My basketball skating was like a, a yogurt with some some like dark chocolate and stuff like that. But right after, yeah. because I was finding that I was losing a little bit of power, so that kind of helped me out a lot as well. Um, I mean, like okay. some good natural yogurts. And this is another thing that I would always stipulate is with natural yogurt. I found that there was so many, so much variance. Like, be, look at, look at the back. Just like pick up a natural yogurt, and be like, they're all the same. They're yeah. not all the same. There's some with like hardly any protein in and just loads of sugar and carbohydrates, and right. then others with a lot more protein in them so if like you're saying proteins you kind of the thing you're trying to dial up make mm-hmm. sure you're checking that yeah and fight is one that i really like it's a, it's clean it's mm-hmm. like the texture is really good i think um i, I bake with it too and it's just it's a good one to cook with um yeah. you can normally sure. tell because it's thicker yeah like if it's thin mm-hmm. then you want to be looking at the back you're like this is quite quite thin and a bit more you know. yeah greek yogurt usually is higher protein yeah. content too so yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good one. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are closing in on the hour mark. Uh, I could literally talk to you for, for hours, I think, on this top subject because it's super interesting. And hopefully, everyone listening to it is um, is dialed in and, and finding it useful. Just because, and, and it's also awesome to be able to have an hour of yours and your husband's time, just because you. you're visiting and kind of yes, you work out and train here, but you, you guys are real experts in your fields, and it's great to right. be able to um, just talk to you for an hour. One for me selfishly oh. and and two uh and two just to be able to put that on, on the net and hopefully our, our um, members really find it useful to kind of find some nutrition stuff i think i think it's a bit of a um one thing that we maybe don't always talk about it's not something we talk about the whiteboard it's not something that you know unless right. we sit down and talk specifically about the individuals and i think there's some really useful top tips in that hopefully for, for people to kind of use in their workouts so i thought we'd finish by doing a kind of I say quick fire. When I said this to Michael, he was like, yeah, yeah, cool, quick fire. And we ended up being like 20 minutes over. Huh. You mean Michael talked too long? Uh, no. I, <laughs> I also indulged in this, but it ended up being like, I asked a question. We ended up having a chat about that question for about okay. 10 minutes and then we moved on to the next question. So I thought we'd do some kind of like quick fire round. Um, and I'll just ask you like stuff about you basically. Like, okay. Just a bit of fun at the end of it. All right. Is there anything else quickly on nutrition that we haven't covered that you like? Dude, you didn't ask me about this. Like, uh, this one thing. Before we get on to that. I feel like... Ooh, no, not really. I mean, if anyone has any questions, they can message me on Instagram or Facebook or, you know... I would, I would definitely or take, my website. take Aaron up on that. So we'll do a bit of a shout-out for you before, before we oh. go to quick files. We're going to do this end, but we're going to do it now. So shut up, eat. Is that What's the website? What's the other website? Shutupeat.com. Easy. Yep. Like, you cannot not find that. Um, you're on Instagram? Yep, Shut Up Eat. Yeah, perfect. And any, any other social media? Uh, Facebook, I have a Shut Up Eat, and then my personal, Aaron Blevins. So, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Post recipes on all those places. So, if you want some ideas about what to eat, if you want any advice, you can be given the green light to message yeah, Aaron. So, sure. um, I'd take, take her up on that offer. That's pretty pretty awesome. Um, so, quick fire round. Okay. What shows are you watching at the moment? Is there anything that you're like, oh my god, this is amazing? Um, Michael's watching Game of Thrones. Oh my god, the last episode was amazing. House of Cards. Yeah. Um, we are we're waiting for Pinky Blinders, (laughs) Netflix shows. Netflix shows. Yeah, big Netflix viewer. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, and I asked him the same question, so I'll ask you: donuts or pop tarts? Donuts. Donuts. Come on. He, he smashed donuts. He was just really? like pop tarts. Yeah, and then he and then he actually said that he, his big things Gross. are like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it cupcakes or muffins or something? Like that? He he was like, no, no, my one thing is this, but I can't remember what it was, but something like that, something different. Or brownies. I think it was brownies. Oh yeah, he he's loves a big brown, brownie guy. He likes this flourless chocolate cake that I've literally made like three times. He's like, that's my favorite thing. I, I don't know why I've like never made it since. Yeah. Well, you keep making cupcakes and bring them in here, and it's like destroying me. Like, it, despite being able to mess around and stuff, I'm like, I know. Damn it. If I'm feeling like kind of chubby, I feel like I like to make other people chubby <laughs> around me. Yeah, you said to me, I was. Just I, I went on a bit of a leaning period. You said to me, "God, you're getting lean. I hate you. <laughs> I'm a cupcake." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in terms of training, what's your favorite thing to train at the moment? Uh, Olympic lifting, gymnastics, or pro sesh, bodybuilding style stuff? Um, I always like bodybuilding because it's my hardest thing to, to see results from. Yeah. Um, uh, I like, I like squatting, but I kind of got off my squat program, so. Yeah. Conditioning with Alexis, I guess. Yeah, nice. You and Alexis have been training very hard. Actually, yeah. uh, just remembered one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah. Um, because I get this question a bit, 
Mm-hmm. Um, or not question, but like a concern. So it's quite a big topic. So if you managed to get through the quick fire round, you're like, oh, right, let's go quick fire and you've ended. I'm sorry, but um, I wanted to ask you this and I completely forgot about it, so apologies for that. Um, as a, uh, a chick that likes lifting weights and into CrossFit, and you know, you talked about being really lean and then going to kind of a, a more muscular frame. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you, what advice do you give to girls that are kind of like, I don't want to get bulky or oh, I don't want big muscles it. or anything like that? Because I struggle with it as a bit of a coach sometimes when I'm talking to, to a new member or someone that's interested in CrossFit and they say to me, and I've got my own opinion on it and I've listened right. to lots of other girls' opinions on it and I try and bet best, but it's pretty, pretty difficult as a guy to be like, no, you wanna you you wanna lift weights because it's gonna you know, and I know all the reasons for it, but I want interested to know so what your thoughts are. This was a fun topic when I was like 116 pounds and I have like a huge deadlift and a huge back squat, and I was like, who's this girl? Um, but you know, it's it took me over a year to to be as big as I am now. I'm still about 134 pounds, which mm. isn't huge. Like I am mm. five eight. Um, it's definitely a better place than 116 pounds, but I will tell you, I was force feeding myself for a year and a half. I mean, crazy amounts of food, sometimes more food than what Michael was eating a day. I mean, wow. food all day long, um, and lifting, and this is as big as I got. Wow. So, uh, you know, I do not think that lifting necessarily makes you big. I yeah. think that lifting and eating to fuel to be big makes you big yeah for sure and and obviously i'm long and so you know it's i'm not gonna pack on the quads i'm not gonna pack on the biceps um yeah so if you're a smaller smaller chick a smaller athlete you're more. gonna get probably so notice the the muscle growth a little bit more because you're short shorter limbs so it'll look more imposing as a, a as a bicep or right as a quad um i actually still have uh, clients at home that have been training for about six years and I definitely use them as my guinea pigs. Um, I have a couple that are literally shaped like me, a couple that are a little bit shorter, and um, one very cute client named Mindy, who is, you know, she she was afraid of that too. She's like, gosh, I just don't want to pack on any more on my claws. She has beautiful legs. She cycles and she races races mountain bikes. Awesome. um, I said, you know, don't, don't feel it. Yeah. You know, go and squat and have fun with it. She loves to lift heavy. And she's strong, like she yeah. can do it, but don't feel it. Don't feed your body so much food that you're able to build this huge muscle. Or go and, you know, run afterwards. You know? Yeah, for sure. You can, you can run your muscle off, believe it or not. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, if, you, if you're lifting heavy and, and doing some, you know, recovery jogging, you're probably not going to get huge and muscular. You're probably just going to have a pretty lean physique. Yeah. So there's there's ways around it. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I, I mean, I think... Certainly, from a male perspective, that's really cool that more girls, especially like cross, CrossFit's been awesome for it, and the fact that CrossFit Games and yeah. girls are looking more performance. I think, personally, attractively, I think it's more attractive to have a, a girl that's in, in shape as opposed to, like, you know, someone that's just sticked in. Like, yeah. Um, but that's a personal thing. But I think it's cool that there's more, more women actually realize do. realize that those girls that you see on TV, like at regionals, they work their asses off, mm. you know, and, and they're training you know, six or seven hours a day. And, you know, some of them are huge, you know, some of them are really big girls. Um, but some of them just look big, um, uh, in photos because they're lean. Yeah. Super Um, lean. And I've met, I've I've been fortunate to meet like people like Brooke Brooke Anson. Yeah. She's super, she's super cut. Yeah. She's like, well, she's not bigger than me. I mean, she's pictures. (laughs) She's not bigger than me. She 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 looks like some, some guys are like, Oh my God, she looks huge. And you stand next to her, she's like, it's just average girl size. She's just super lean, so she right. looks really cut. Right. Well, I know that um, when Michael was training some of the guys for 300, um, everyone was like, oh my gosh, how did you get those guys that big? And in actuality, they were very small and lean, and, you know, they were like 175 pounds. Yeah. And being cut makes a massive difference. Exactly. It just makes you look, the definition, right. definition, especially, it depends, like, um, my limited knowledge of how cameras work. If you, in terms of how you dial things out, you can pull, pull out pull out the definition more depending on like what grades and filters and stuff like that lenses that you use. Right. You can just make people look huge on camera. I mean, Michael's taken pictures of me and made me look big, yeah. and I've been 
you know, people have said stuff on my Instagram. Oh, what are you on? Like, you're huge. I'm like, Food. That was so <laughs> funny. Food like, and weights no, and a good lens. Yeah, it's just funny because it's like, gosh, I really do look big in that picture. And I, I'll get all proud about it because, you know, I'm not like a mm. normal person. So I think that it's all. It's a bit of a compliment when you try and work on, yeah. like, you know, getting strong and, and performance and, and strength is your key goal when someone's like, you look. You're not ripped, you're not strong, yeah. you're not big. You're like, yes! Right. <laughs> Those cupcakes worked! <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to get a surprise jack. So, um, girls, <laughs> yeah. if you're thinking about lifting heavy, you know, work into it and start to like it and, you know, see if it's something that you want to do. Most. It's kind of fun. It's, it's addicting and, yeah. you know, a, a lot of the times if you um, really put focus your goals more on performance rather than like, oh, I just want to be so lean. You'll usually get lean as your byproduct. Mm. So it will happen that way. Yeah, and most of, like, again, just from experience, I've seen that happen, definitely. Like, yeah, it wasn't the intention, but just through, through right. doing more training and eating well, yeah, just naturally happens. And actually, they ended up, like, um, smaller, even though they weren't, like, you know, the, more muscular but smaller in terms of actual footprint of, of arm if yeah you like. exactly um just because it was leaner yeah and getting a little bit of muscle under there you know it burns your fat yeah <laughs> so it uh it gives you the appearance of being a little bit leaner yeah cool so yeah, go do it girls <laughs> awesome I, we literally everything just went quiet there so like I know, no music got, like, dark <laughs> it's like suddenly everything silence and you can just yeah. hear us so the best sound quality is just as we're coming to the end of this so brilliant um <laughs> <laughs> perfect 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 way to end but um thank you very, again thank you very much i oh, really uh, appreciate this before we finish um any shout outs and uh, we've named a few people we've shouted yourself out anyone else that you want to give props to um michael my husband he's amazing it's it's super fun to to work with him um Perpetua, thanks for having us. I know that we're Welcome. invading your space and your snack bar. Uh, we've, we've made ourselves at home in your snack bar. I, I, think, I, think, I think it's going to be really weird when you go, to be honest, like when you have to go back and do other jobs. And you all. will have an abundance of snacks and you're like, wow. I think Mike Lee's going to love it. He's going to have like, or he's going to run out of peanut butter, certainly. So you, you might have to send stuff over to him, care packages. You know what? I have like a love-hate relationship with Mike because <laughs> I am a recovering peanut butter addict. And <laughs> yeah. he, like, it took me so long to get off peanut butter and now I've relapsed. Yeah. And it's all Mike Lee's fault. Yeah, I somehow managed to, I somehow managed to not eat peanut butter as much as I used to. Yeah. But he, yeah, he's like a tub of day man. Oh, man. I think. I don't know. I'm joking. I'm slightly, I'm slightly embarrassing for, for comedic, <laughs> comedic value there. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, if you haven't listened to it, please listen to podcast with Michael. He was yeah, sure. an awesome guest and kind of you know, tie some of the things we talked about a little bit together. He is uh, Grit and Teeth online, so you can find him on Instagram and website. His website's really cool. We're both featured on there. Lots of cool photography as well. Oh, yeah. He's a good photographer. Lots, yeah. of, lots of pictures of you guys on there, too. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And, but yeah, we, we love having your photo shirt. It's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure. But uh, anyone else? Fun shout outs? Um... You know what else you props to? No, not this time. No? Wait, everyone else. No, just kidding. <laughs> everyone else? You suck. Uh, you know, my coach in Salt Lake, Justin Dixon and Cassie at awesome. Salt Lake City CrossFit. I met those guys. They're super fun to work out with. Oh, cool. I learned a lot from him. Well, I'm going to the States actually in a few weeks. I'm going to the games. I'm tri road tripping from Denver to LA. So hopefully I'll get to cut through Utah. Denver like, maybe. To LA. Yeah, we're going through Utah. So maybe if I'm like... Are you? Yeah, yeah. When are you going? Um... Uh, I fly out on the 18th, so I'll probably be around there like 20th, I think. Oh, what July. Month? July? Yeah. You can go see right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's an invitation. Yeah. Um, camera. Well, we'll be here. So yeah. Go work out at Salt Lake City CrossFit. Definitely. Yeah. I'll come check out. Shoot them the line. Yeah, do it. So, awesome. Yeah. Um, just from me, just to wrap up, thank you very much, Evan. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, we, I could like I said, carry on talking to you for ages just about the subject. I think it's super interesting and um, it's just really nice to talk to both you and Michael about stuff. A um, couple of things from me. Firstly, uh, on if you haven't this, heard, heard uh, any of the coaches chat about it, we have uh, London Box Parks coming up on the 9th of July. Get involved in that. Even if you haven't competed before, it's a really good way to get into competition. And as Erin talked about, you can maybe look at your nutrition around competition. Um, if you're not sure what it is, come speak to one of your coaches. Um, also, we have some new stash. You can see me rocking the new proof t-shirt. We have two new t-shirts at the fuel bar. So, um, 
yeah, come check out the new t-shirts. We've also got some new stance up, so loads going on the box. Um, thank you very much, and um, hopefully, so a little bit sneak peek, hopefully the next podcast will be Michael Price, the um, the one that kind of got away. Yeah, the one and only Michael Price. We, I did, so the story is I did two podcasts with him. Uh-huh. The first one, the audio messed up. The mm-hmm. second one, the video messed up. So I've got like I've got like two half podcasts. So the next one will be with him. It will be about how Perpetua started and the Michael Price story. So tune in for that. I think that will be uh, that'll be pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. But he's got a hard act to follow. I mean, Aaron Blevins, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Take it easy. Yeah. Thank you. High five. Finish. Oh. Perfect. Boom.